Hello everyone and welcome to my DCS World War II update for September 2019. Now this month, although it was a bit light on actual content releases, there was a ton of information given out about development from Eagle Dynamics themselves. So there's actually quite a lot of content to get through in this video. Let's start the video then with some comment on the previously proposed World War II Assets Pack update. Now there was an update to this Assets Pack that was proposed for summer, however that deadline has now been missed. Nine Line on the 3rd of September made a brief comment explaining that the deadline had been missed largely due to some attempts to better integrate the assets with combined arms. I subsequently asked on the forums how long the delay was likely to be and Nine Line's response was that they are still looking to complete the update inside 2019. So fingers crossed we will get something before Christmas, hopefully just as the war is ending. Now on to an item which is going to make quite a few people rather happy, not least of which because it means it will shut me up for a while. And that is that the sun glare bug in the Spitfire has been fixed. This was resolved in early September. And this is a bug that I've been harping on about for about a year. So it's great to see that ED have got onto this and fixed this little problem. In addition, they've also reconfigured the camera limits, which is particularly frustrating for those of us who are used track IR. Those camera limits have now been restored to how they were when they were in a working condition. So I would say that the Spitfire now is looking pretty damn good and all the major issues that at least I've had with this module are now resolved. In other news relating to upcoming modules, we found out very early in September about the proposed development order for the upcoming World War II aircraft, and this relates to the flyable modules. The 190A8 has already been released, and it's now been confirmed that the order of release for the next World War II flyable modules will be the P-47, more on that later, and then secondly, the Mosquito. We also found out as part of that update that a version of the Mosquito has been seen in internal test versions of DCS. So the developers are flying around in the Mosquito in their internal versions. Moving on to some of the non-flyables now, there are some screenshots of the Marauder and a U-boat, which will be non-flyable AI units which will be added to the assets pack in due time. I was hoping they would be part of the summer update so perhaps we'll get those towards the end of 2019. The question was asked also right at the end of August which I missed last month with respect to the proposed FC3 pack of World War II aircraft which had been floated in 2018 I believe. We've got a little bit of information now from Nine Line about the flight modeling, but this is pretty speculative stuff. Nine Line doubts that these aircraft will have the simple flight model, and he's uh, suggesting that these aircraft will have the PFM. However, he says that there's nothing firm on this, and ED are focusing on the P-47, the Mosquito, and he also mentions the 262. Now, given that we know the development order is... 190A8, followed by the P-47, followed by the Mosquito. I think we can safely assume then that the 262 will be the last of those flyable modules to be produced. Now this next item is not strictly a World War II item. However, I think it has quite a lot of applicability to those of us who fly the Warbirds. And that is that in the middle of September... Kathmandu, who's one of the customers of ED, posted a video on the forum showing him sneaking up on a jet in another jet. So this was him in a MiG-29A sneaking up on an excellent AI. And he positioned himself the whole time in the blind spot of the enemy aircraft, and he was able to sneak right up on it. Now, this is not something we've previously seen from the AI consistently in DCS. Previously, you would just get within the 
let's say, visibility bubble of an enemy aircraft, which was normally determined simply by range, and they would then go into combat mode and react. Now it seems there may actually be a visibility cone for those aircraft. And if you keep yourself in an AI's blind spot, you won't be seen until the last minute. So you can apparently sneak up on them now. I haven't done extensive testing on this and there hasn't been a comprehensive reply from ED, but it's worthwhile watching that video, which I'll link below and uh, decide for yourself whether you think this actually represents a development in AI intelligence. AI intelligence. Now the word intelligence is obviously redundant there. Let's discuss the P47 now, which is to be the next released player flyable module for World War II DCS. We did see a couple of nice screenshots of the P47 and the model itself is looking really, really fine. However, the first talking point I want to take from this is the background on the screenshots that were provided. As a couple of astute players have noticed, this does not look like the Normandy map. The assets are not familiar to those of us who have the Normandy map and the layout of the landscape and the trees and whatnot is a bit different to what we're used to. So obviously this spawned a series of speculations about what map this is and where it might be located. The thinking from most players is that this is probably a northwest Germany location. However, you will notice that it appears to be a little hilly in the background, so it's hard to confirm where this might be because there certainly seems to be a bit of topography here. With respect to the development of the P47 itself, I've noticed that Yo-Yo from Eagle Dynamics has been pretty active commenting in the development thread on the forum. So I encourage players who are interested in the development of this aircraft to read through some of the content in that forum. He's been posting some nice technical information on this aircraft and its development. We also had a great post from Andy1966 who identified the differences between the 20, the 22, the 28 and the 30 P47. I understand the 30 is the one we're getting or maybe the 28, although the thread itself is titled with the 30 variant. This is a fantastic bubble canopy variant and it's quite late in the war. I am actually pretty tempted to take a look at this aircraft when it is released because from what I can see in this thread it is a very very well developed module indeed. Nineline also posted quite a lot of detail about the P47 turbocharger development in the weekend update for the 27th of September. There are a few charts showing boost control and altitude which those of you who are Engine geeks will probably appreciate, and it shows some of the detail that they are putting into the engine of this module. And I think this module is going to fly quite differently to the other modules in the game. And it's certainly going to fly quite differently to how the P-47 has been represented in other simulations. So for those of you who want to get the authentic P-47 experience, I strongly suspect that this module is going to give you something pretty close to that. Finally now to wrap up the development for September of 2019 I've saved the big item for last and that is updates to the damage model. We now have some indications that the damage model and the P47 will be released relatively close to each other. What relatively close means I can't clarify however it is almost certain that the damage model will be released before the P47 comes out. Nineline posted some screenshots zooming in basically on the undercarriage system itself. And I want to just read off a little bit of the text that Nineline has posted to explain what's going on with the damage model just looking at undercarriage. Nineline says, now you can lose brakes on a specific wheel, you can suffer hydraulic failure on a particular piston, and even damage the drives for the gear themselves. In addition, as shown in the images, you can take damage that would cause the up or the down locks to fail, and this means you could suffer gear droop or gear collapse on landing. 
That's in addition to the couple of screenshots that Nine Line provided. Now this is looking like a highly detailed damage model. And in fact, it's looking so detailed that I'm starting to get just a little bit concerned that the amount of information going backwards and forwards on this damage model may make playing DCS Warbirds prohibitive if you've got large numbers of aircraft or players. But that is speculation on my behalf. I'm obviously hoping that Eagle Dynamics go through the process of streamlining all the code to make this as performance friendly as possible. However, I really do appreciate the amount of detail they're going into to get this damage model as good as it can possibly be. So that rounds off development progress for September of 2019 on the DCS Warbirds side. I just want to make a last little comment here that uh, Reflected Simulations have a screenshot competition ongoing and the best submissions will be rewarded with keys for an upcoming F-86 Sabre campaign or one of the World War II campaigns. Entries close on October 31st and there's only a couple of screenshots currently entered in the competition. So if you're interested in getting your hands on one of those campaigns, then I highly recommend you take some screenshots and dump them in that thread and chance your hand at the win. So thanks for watching everybody. As usual, happy hunting and I will see you up there.